Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to another epi episode of Guide for the Suffering. You will notice a lot of bad things with this recording because I am recording pretty late and I uh, haven't recorded for a long time. And so I'm just coming out, out as it goes. I'm trying it without any preparation, really, barely a little bit of preparation, perhaps just in my mind. Today, though, this episode is perhaps the one that is most important for me and the one that I'm going to, where I'm going to lay the foundation of something that will come back over and over and over again in the next episodes. I had promised at the beginning that I was going to teach you how to suffer less. I promised that we were going to find ways to reduce suffering. And this is that episode where we begin with that. Now, Obviously, the most important thing is the state of grace. The most important thing is to love God, to be out of sin. But remember that we are talking from the presumption that perhaps you don't believe in God yet. So we're still working on that. We're still going in that direction. I think that most of us do believe in God one way or another, but what we don't believe is in religion. So... In these episodes, in all these programs, we're talking with both of these things, religion and, and, and also the physical part, the mental aspect. Today, let's go back to that, to that process, to that first uh, foundation. We had mentioned that you, as a human being, are made of three things, or you, you could say three different realms of reality. One is your body, the other one is your mind, and the other one is your soul, the spiritual side of it. Before I go into the soul, let's go into how we can stop suffering first by addressing the mind. My friend, your mind and your body and your soul are all so connected that what happens with one will affect the other necessarily. This is amazing when you think about it. You know, when you see, for example, that you're sick in your body and you're not feeling healthy, you're tired, uh, there are, you know, you're, you're in pain perhaps. And that affects your mind. It's more difficult to think. It's more difficult to control your mind. That is true. It is also true that what you think with your mind will come to affect your body. The reason why I started making these shows was because I myself have suffered from depression. Very deep depression, I could say. I know that is a real thing. And a lot of times depression comes... There are many causes for it, you know, it's our circumstances, the way we eat, even our, our mode of life, sin, obviously, the supernatural side. And a lot of it also comes from our bad habits. We develop bad habits that we never correct. When I suffered from depression, I went to a doctor and this doctor gave me pills. And these pills solved the problem immediately. It was uh, pills that would... Uh, provide the brain with serotonin, the drug that is supposed to make you happy. And yeah, I took the pills and immediately I started feeling better. My life entirely changed, supposedly. Um, I felt much more active, you know, much more cheerful. Uh, everything changed. I was much more sociable. Um, however, after taking these pills for maybe, I don't know, two or three months, I went to another doctor. And this doctor told me, get off those pills immediately. Now, you can't, get, you can't get off of them right now. You have to, in, 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 in steps, remove the doses, you know, make it less and less and less. The next two weeks, take uh, you only half a pill. And then uh, the, after that, two weeks, take only one third of a pill and so forth until you, you get rid of them. And at the same time, he said, I want you to exercise. I want you to eat very well, healthy. I want you to spend time in the sun and with other people, and to laugh. But this is the most important part, he said. I want you to remove all negative thoughts, and I want you to think of positive things. And I gave the same answer that every person in depression gives. That's impossible, I said. Why? Because I don't have any positive things in my life. You know, everything is wrong. And then he said to me, listen, I want to show you how important your brain, your thoughts are for how you feel. And then he said, take this, imagine here a cutting board. 
We're in Mexico, so in Mexico, what I'm about to say is pretty common. Take this cutting board, and you're going to take a lime, one of those green limes. Take the lime and put it in the cutting board. Take your knife and start cutting the knife, the, the, the lime, little by little. You see how it's cutting, and it's cutting. And then you see the juice of the lime coming out. And you see the juice of the lime coming out on the cutting board. You take the lime, and you're going to put it on the, on the glass, on the cup, and you're going to squeeze the lime and see how it goes. Is your mouth watering? And I said, yes. And he said, that's how powerful your brain is. That the things that you think affect your body. So powerfully that your mouth watered just from imagining things. And so, when you're thinking of negative things, you're causing your body to act in the same way as if those things were happening. And it's a vicious circle, because then those things do happen. If you're thinking, for example, that you're hated, because you were hated, let's say, an hour ago, but you keep dwelling on that, you are suffering that same thing, and your body is reacting as if it was happening. So you are very, very real in reality. You are suffering those things, but you're suffering them because you're causing them here with your mind. So the first step is just a natural step. You know, I'm not talking about anything religious yet. The first step is this. You have to control those thoughts in your mind and reject them. As soon as you start thinking, well, my life is always there, that thought that goes out of my mind. As soon as you start thinking, well, nobody cares about, that thought goes out of your mind. Well, but it's true because, no, can't think about it, not going to talk about it. Does that mean that I'm asking you to deceive yourself? No. What I'm asking you is to be wise in how you use your thoughts and to be wise in what you permit in your mind. Most of these negative thoughts that you have, if you think about it, you don't have any reason to be thinking about them at the point. Someone made fun of me. Are they making fun of you right now? No. Then what's the point? Don't think about it. I have problems with my husband or with my wife. Well, are you having that problem right now? No. Then don't think about it. Can you solve it right now? No, I can't really solve it right now. Then don't think about it. Can you do something right now to solve the problem? Can you do something right now to make it better? Are you dealing with it right now at this split second? If none of those things are true, then that thought has nothing to be there. There's no reason for the thought to be there. My friend, this I'm going to repeat it over and over again because it's very important, but why must you be suffering all those things without need? You're not required to. It's enough to suffer what you have to suffer right now. And if you look at your day, you will see, well, it is true. Perhaps of those 24 hours, I have to suffer this many hours, but there are some hours where this suffering is not happening. Spare yourself. In those hours, spare yourself. When you do that, give me one second, this is what happens. Light is made. When you do that, your mind becomes brighter. It's like, okay, I'm really, I really don't have to suffer all those things. I really don't have to go through all those things. The reason why I say that I'm going to be repeating this is because it's not going to take a 15-minute video or 20-minute video to solve this problem. It's not going to take me telling you just once or twice or three times. You have developed a habit of thinking negative things. And we have to get rid of that habit. And just like any habit, it's going to take time and effort and constant repetition to get rid of it. For you, my particular friend, that you know who you are, I know what you're might be thinking right now, you might be thinking, you know, yes, I could get rid of my thoughts. But the truth is, I have a lot in my mind, and, and there is a lot of 
in my life, in my reality, that it's unavoidable. You're telling me, well, think positive thoughts. Oh, yeah, I could think positive thoughts, but I'm still going to have 50%, 70%, 80% of my life messed up, ruined, difficult, that I don't want to have. Well, here's the thing. If you solve this problem of your thoughts and the other problem that I'm about to mention, a lot of that can go away too. And as I've said before, not only it will go away, perhaps it won't go away, but it will become a blessing. It will become something useful, something that you will find a good use for. It's almost going to be like a treasure. It's possible. What if that could happen with your life? What if you could change your life in such a way that all the things that you're suffering from being something bad turned into something good? You know, I can think, for example, imagine the first people that found oil. You know, this, this must have been probably behind, before oil was needed for anything. And they had this place and they digged and then pff, a bunch of black stuff came over, gooey stuff that stinks, that is flammable, that is dangerous. It's like, oh man, what a curse. Look at this. We have our whole territory here. Our whole property is filled with this black gooey stuff that is totally useless on the ground. We can't dig. There's nothing we can do. Our whole life is ruined. Our whole property is ruined because this gooey stuff is here. Black, useless. It's good for nothing. Ten years later, your property is worth millions of dollars because it turns out you have like the most valuable thing that you could find in it. But you didn't know at the, at the moment. That's a lot of times what happens with our sufferings, with the things that we go through. We think, why am I going through this? It's terrible. I can't have, I don't have any use for it. It's so unjust. It's so unfair. It's doing so much harm to me. And then 10 years later, you realize, wow, how many things, how many good things came out from that? Of how many things was I protected because of that? You know, I remember, obviously, I'm not going to go into all the details. Not in this video. You have to subscribe to get the rest of it. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of my personal life, I was going to say. Uh, so you have to subscribe to get those later. But when I think about it, it's like, okay, all those things that I saw as so bad and so terrible and so harmful and painful. Wow, those things protected me from so many things. I know myself, I would have been terrible if I had had prosperity at that time. If I hadn't had all the horrible things that happened to me. But because of those things... I am where I am with these blessings. Perhaps the sickness that you have, perhaps the pains that you go through, were meant so that you would reach a much greater blessing, knowing God and getting to heaven. Listen, think about this. What would have been... And Okay, I'm going into religion. Just bear with me for a while. If there is a heaven and hell as I know that there are. How, compare these two scenarios. You would live a very beautiful, perfect life in here with a lot of prosperity, you know, a lot of uh, success, social success, money and all those things. And then if there is a hell, you wouldn't know God because you were too prosperous. You didn't have time to think of God. You had everything that you needed here, so you never thought of God. And you die, and then hell. You know, an eternity of abandonment, of chaos, of sorrow and suffering. The other scenario. You live all your life, years and years and years with pain and sickness and difficulty. But perhaps, as I said before, that was the only way that you would know God. That pushed you, it led you, it forced you to have recourse to a higher being, to a better eternity, to a better life afterwards. And so eventually you came to the point where you said to yourself, you know what? Okay, God exists. And I believe, I have hope in the afterlife. This life is terrible, I suffer. But I know now that there is an afterlife where God really wants me to be happy. And that he maybe gave me all these things to force me one way or another to come to him and know him and be happy. And then you come to that life, an eternity of, bless, of a blessed life of happiness. And you realize, you talk to God and God tells you, Yes, listen, I made you suffer this much. It was a couple of years. I'm sorry. It was difficult. God would never say I'm sorry, but I know it was difficult for you. And I wish you hadn't had to suffer that. But I know you, and you know yourself. You wouldn't have made it here if it wasn't for that. But now, 
those years have passed. It was a few years. Now you have thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of years to live. Millions and millions of years to live. And it's just the beginning because after that there will be millions and millions of years to live eternally happy, eternally blessed, with no sickness, with no pain, with all your friends, everybody loving you here. Everything is going to be perfect because this is how I really design things to be perfect. This is the place where things happen as I have designed them. Because here everything has, has happened as it was supposed to be. Now you'll be eternally happy. A few years against millions and millions and millions of years. What makes more sense? Of course, if you see those two scenarios, you would say to yourself, you know what, I prefer the second. It's okay if I have to suffer a little bit in this life to make it to that second scenario. My friend, it is real. It is real. You know, I've been telling you for a while now that uh, there is good in suffering and, and all these things about the hope that we have. There were saints, there were people that took suffering with joy and happiness and they, well, they suffered, it was difficult, yes, but they saw the treasure that they had in there and they lived these things. And you might say, well, they were fanatics, it was crazy people, you know, the, those guys that, you know, you see in the streets going like, oh, the, the end of the world is coming, you know, crazy fanatics. No, when you look at the lives of the saints and you look at these people, they were very reasonable people, very smart people. As a matter of fact, most of them were rather skeptical at the, at the beginning. You had the apostles of our Lord that when our Lord rose again from the dead, they wouldn't believe it. Just like wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. They were reasonable people. And I'll say reasonable, quote unquote. They were people like, that would think like any of us would do. And I say reasonable, quote unquote, because it would have been reasonable to believe in our Lord. And they didn't. But what I mean to say is they would have the same reaction that you had. You had uh, St. Thomas saying, I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe until I put my hands in his side. You know, I put my hand here in his side. Then I'm going to believe when I touch it with my hands. I'm not going to believe until I put my fingers here in his wounds. Then when I touch it, otherwise don't come and give me your, your jokes and your stories and your dreams from women. That was their reaction. And then they believed. You might say, well, ah, those stories are 2,000 years old. No, these things happen every single time, year and after year, century after century. I can look around me and I can look at myself and many other people around me. And there are many just like me that, yes, had the same reactions that you did, that we wouldn't believe. Why did we believe? Because at some moment that happened where God changed our lives. That moment of grace, which is coming for you too. I was going to give you quotes of the saints from this book that I'm, I was hoping to follow as I'm doing these shows. But uh, it kind of would break the mood and, and, and I, I don't have the talent to mix those two things at once. I need to finish this show. It's all, this episode is already too long. But I need to finish with the most important part. There mi it might happen, and this is true. It might happen that when you think you try to think of positive things and you try to get rid of the negative things, um, you might not be able to. Why is that? Because we are made of three realms, the material, the spiritual, and the mental. I had to be very careful there with the fingers and how I put them down. So I'm telling you, yes, take care of the mental in this way. The physical, you might be able to work on it, you might not be able to work on it. But the spiritual, we need to work on it. And if we don't work on it, we will not be able to be positive. Because if your life is difficult and you're suffering and all those things, and you don't take care of the spiritual, you're always going to have that in the background, it's always going to be a problem. If I am very sick and I'm suffering greatly and I'm alone and I feel lonely and uh, I don't have any prospects in my life, you know, what do I do now? What, what is in the future? I, know, I don't really find anything. 
I can always go back to say, well, you know what? I'm good spiritually. I'm at peace with God. I know that God loves me and I know that I can make it to heaven. If you have that, everything else makes sense. You have the foundation in it. If you have that, you always have something to have recourse to. You have, you know what it is like? It's like those people right now in the, in the crisis, in the economical crisis, that, you know, everybody has their 401k, their money here and there, their bank accounts. But everybody's nervous because you don't know if your bank account is going to be closed. You don't know if your 401k is going to pan out. Uh, I don't know anything about economics, but everything is kind of uncertain. Your house, maybe your mortgage is, is you know, in there and all the stuff. But if someone, there is someone around there that has like a bunch of gold in the back and no one sees it and you never use it, perhaps. It wouldn't apply to the spiritual life, but yes, you never use that gold and you have it hidden there in the background. You have a, like a full room where you have a couple, you know, thousand dollars of gold. Whenever you're troubled by the economics, you can always go back and say, I have that. I'm good. You know, I know that I have my big, my big, uh, uh, I don't know, storage of gold. So I'm, I'm good. Whatever happens, I'm going to be good economically because, you know, that doesn't move. My bank account can change and my 401k, the government can do this and that. But my gold, I have it. It's mine. I have it right here. That's not going to move. If something goes bad, I can always have recourse to that. That's what it is when you have friendship with God and you love him and he loves you back. You have something always to go back to. Something incredibly valuable. Valuable more than anything else that you have. And so to you is like, okay, this can go back in. I can have bad health. It doesn't matter. I'm good with God. I have all eternity secured. Uh, something can go bad with uh, my work. I might lose my job, get, you know, lose my money, maybe become poor. It doesn't matter because I'm good with God. And I know that when I get to heaven, everything will be taken care of. I'll be fine. Maybe I broke up in relationships and I find no one and I feel alone and nobody cares about me and people reject me and nobody wants to spend time with me or listen to me or, or talk to me. It doesn't matter. Why? Because I can talk to God and God can like talk to me and I love him and he loves me back. And I know that if I love God and God loves me, I'm okay with every single good person in the world. Maybe right now here, I won't see it. When I get to heaven, I will see it and I will be friends with everyone. And everyone will love me and I will love them back. You see what I mean? Everything is well when we're good with God. You might say to me, well, but that's kind of an illusion. You know, you don't see those things. You don't taste them. It's, it's all on faith and, and, you know, it's very convenient. No, you, you taste them. You taste them right now in this life. It's, listen, you know life, you have seen these things. You cannot be happy and comforted and, and feel confident when something is false. When something is false, it just doesn't give you that. But when something is real, it does give it to you. It's real. I'm telling you that it's real. And it really can change your life. I need to finish this show. But, or this episode, I should say. I'll leave you with this, okay? Let's try to think about this and say to ourselves, you know what? I want the second scenario. At least I'm not going to reject it. Okay, at least I'm going to think it is possible and I want it. And you know what? I'm going to start asking God. God, help me believe in you. Help me have these things. Help me to get out of this vicious circle of, of uh, evil for myself, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Help me at least to solve the spiritual part. But I don't believe in God. How will I talk to him? Listen, pray to God and ask him to give you faith. God, help me believe. Give me faith. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, give me faith. God is not some big entity. He's a person. Three persons. Talk to him. And at the same time, let's begin practicing that advice that I gave you. Whenever any negative thought comes to your mind, you will cast it aside. You will say, I'm not going to think about it. And you know what? In the meantime, say to yourself, I have a good hope that I might be able to believe in God. I'm going to work towards that. That's going to be my positive thought that I'm going to replace. You know, the, the, the bad things come out, all the negative things come out, whether it be of myself or others or situation or whatever. And the positive thought that I'm going to put instead is going to be, I have hope that I might be able to believe in God and that might change my life. 
and I'm going to continue praying to God, and I'm going to continue trying to change that to see if I can solve this one of the third, you know, the third uh, realm of my being. I'm sorry that it took too long to get this video out. Uh, I hope I can make the next one soon, after Easter perhaps. But at least this one was done. Please take, a, take care of these advices and do them. And, you know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, complaints, send them over. Send them over in the comments. I really care about you and I really want you to be happy, er, and I want you to be happy eternally in heaven. Pray for me as well so that we all get there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.